let's talk crochet. Hey folks, it's Mary, AKA Mercy Triumphs, and this is Slow Crochet. This is episode 074, and I am just gonna share with y'all some of the things that I've been crocheting in this past week. Now, just small disclaimer, there are two little projects that I made so little progress on that I'm actually not even gonna mention them, but if you're curious, it's a hat, it's a sweater, and they are in the last podcast episode. But I did have some big finishes this week. I'm really thankful that they're done. I'm really proud of them. I love how they turned out. So let me share those two with you now. The first one is my host fag ring. Now, pardon my, I, I'm pronouncing it the best I can as if it were German, but it is the Autumn Garden Shawl. And small disclaimer, I have not blocked this. So it feels a little bit curly up at the side, but I just finished it last night. I wanted to include it in this podcast, so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. I'm actually gonna drop in some footage of it right here of me modeling it, but I'll tell you about it in the meantime. So for this shawl, I used a size G hook, which is a 4.5 millimeter hook, and I used all different colors of Patton's Croy socks. Now on the first part of the shawl, I used the color Glen Check, and then I used that again at the end of it. After the color Glen Check, it went into a color called Cadet Colors, and then into Clover Colors, ooh, and then into Camo Colors, and then I actually ended up at Joann's just kind of on a whim. I actually have a little video that will sometime come out in the future um, about that little escapade, but um, I got the color Cascade Colors. Um, I had realized that I was not gonna have enough yarn if I didn't get one more of these Patton's Croy socks. So I did get that extra color and then I finished up in the Glen Check colors. I finished the shawl a slight bit different than it calls for. In the original pattern, you only do the scallops on one long edge, but I ended up doing it on both edges of the triangle, both of the shorter edges rather. And then across the top, I ended up doing just a row of single crochet because I really did want to neaten out that edge and kind of tie the whole thing together. Patton's Croy Socks, if you're not familiar, is a number one weight yarn. It's 50 grams, 1.75 ounces. It's about 166 yards per ball. This seems pretty consistent over time because some of these balls were kind of vintage ones. Um, and I just had them from some of my thrifting and then you know having to buy that new one. But I thought, let me go ahead and see how this would work up as a shawl. Um, I have done this pattern once in the past, but this is the first time that I've had enough yarn to complete it in its entirety. I would say a full six balls of that sock yarn is what I ended up needing. I didn't use all of it, but that's okay. It's rather, I would rather have a little extra than not enough. Um, in terms of this shawl, I really do like how it comes together. You start out with that kite shape, and I really also love these beautiful flowers in there. And then those are interspersed with some V stitches and some grid, kind of like a mesh or like a chain stitch where it's a chain one, skip one, double crochet situation. And then um, after a certain point, you stop with the kite shape and you just continue up on one side. If you're not familiar with this pattern, it is very well written and I found myself relying also on the charts, not just the written pattern itself. So I'm very thankful. Um, it is a free pattern. It's really beautifully done and such a wonderful shawl. So this should be nice and toasty. Um, I'm actually really excited. I think I'm, I'll probably wash it and block it tomorrow. But since it's made out of sock yarn that's supposed to be washable, entirely washable, um, I think it ought to soften up quite a bit. I think that all these colors are kind of fun. They're like nice neutrals. And it'll be nice and toasty, more so as like a neck scarf than a full on shawl. It doesn't really cover your back all the way. And it is quite long. So I am looking forward to washing that up, seeing how it turns out. And I'm even thinking maybe this will be a Mother's Day gift for someone in my life. I'm not sure, but we shall see. Out of all the different colorways that I chose, my favorite is actually gonna be those Cascade colors, the newer ones that I picked up, because they're these beautiful, beautiful 
grays and aquas that I kind of modeled through there. So lovely yarn there. And again, this is the first time I worked with this as a sock yarn. Some of it was softer than other colorways were, but it was a really great experience. And I'm glad that I have that done. The other big finish this week is my Composed of Madness shawl from Crystal over at Bag of Day from her shawl along. I did finish that shawl and I'm just going to show it briefly here because I am actually putting together a whole video of the process from start to finish there. But I did want to acknowledge that a lot of my crochet time did go into working on this shawl. It is all done and all of its deep watercolory glory. And yeah, look for that upcoming video in the next little bit, sometime later this month. This week, a lot of my crochet time was actually given to working on a tutorial for this hat. Now, this is only the second time I've ever done a tutorial. And my rule of thumb is I'm only gonna do tutorials on things that are original designs and on things that I believe in. In order to create this hat, this is the hat I used that I created the tutorial alongside as I was working on it. Now, because I'm a slow crocheter, crocheting as I go and filming as I go just slows things down even more. But hopefully this time, you know, I'm still practicing with this medium of YouTube. There's a whole different thought process that goes into filming a tutorial. But anyway, that's what I did this week. So I have the hat. If you're interested, look for that tutorial and feel free to give me feedback on it because I just want to improve the best I can. I do have some limitations. I'm not a professional. I don't have a professional setup here as most YouTubers don't, but I had a lot of fun um, feeling like I could learn and grow and create a tutorial that I was proud of. So hopefully you'll find it helpful. You'll enjoy it. And if not, it's just out there for me knowing that it's a way for me to stretch and grow in this craft. The last thing I wanna show you guys is my scrap yarn hexagon blanket. I do like to check in with you guys at the beginning of a month, and here's my center square here, just to give a sense of where I'm at. So, ah, we are getting kind of big. <laughs> well, not big, I mean, it's still, it's still actually small, smaller than a baby blanket at this point, but making a lot of progress. Um, I do have my kind of, uh, the kind of birch tweed interior, and then I have two rows on the outside of more of that creamy color for the border colors. So I did get quite a bit done on this. I liked having that complete round. And then in the meantime, I've just been making interior hexagons. Some of these have two colors in them, some of them are just a single color, but I'm trying to get a full, I think I need 30 of them for this next round. Um, I was able to get some more of the kind of birchy tweed. So I think what I'll do is I'll do another round of that birch tweed solidly, maybe even two, I don't know, but I'll intersperse that with the rest of the cream color as I keep going. So this is something that I don't work on all the time, but sometimes you just want a very satisfying small finish. So doing something like this or crocheting it as you go onto the bigger part of the blanket, it does feel really satisfying. And it's wonderful to have that little bit to do. And for me, when I'm looking back at some of these colors, I can think of the different projects that they came through. So these are all acrylics, 100% acrylics, four weights. And it's not really a planned thing, it is literal scraps. But I'm also at this point where I'm finding that I don't have a lot of acrylic scraps left, so it's kind of pushing me to start new projects and use up what I have, and then I can have more scraps to feed into this blanket. So happy about that. Um, that's just that fun, beautiful cycle with yarn. Um, let me know, y'all, are you the same way? Do you love working with scraps? Do you love scrap projects? And does that ever motivate you to use yarn in different ways because you actually want to have the scrap available? Is that something that has ever occurred to you? Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear. So that is it for me this week. Couple of finishes, couple of things in progress, but very, very happy to be able to share with y'all what I've been working on. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers, old and new, y'all. I am getting close to when I actually started this, this YouTube channel. It's nearly been a year, which is hard to believe. I have to figure out actually when I started this thing, but, <laughs> but I really appreciate y'all for being along with me for the journey. It has been such a pleasure so far and it's such a delight and a joy to be able to talk yarn with y'all and to be part of your lives. Thank you again so much to everyone that comments and likes all those YouTube algorithm things are super encouraging and it is such a joy to kind of see that you and I get to interact some and that we're adding value to each other's lives. If I'm not your cup of tea, 
Thank you so very much for listening this long. I do appreciate you and I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.